since the late 20s or 2005 Booming bad investments seems like they'd thrive You must save to invest, don't use the printing press Or a bus will surely follow, an economy depressed Normally the interest rate in the market, uh, when it's not being distorted, will coordinate saving and investment. We won't have these kind of systematic mistakes where investment projects are made that can't be brought to fruition. There will be mistakes made, sort of randomly, people have ideas that turn out not to be as profitable as they hoped, but we don't see this kind of systematic uh, pouring of resources into interest-sensitive industries like housing. Uh, when the crisis comes, when projects have to be abandoned, you have workers who have been brought into an industry, say the housing industry, uh, who are no, can no longer be profitably employed there. They have to find employment somewhere else. Uh, that takes a while. People are reluctant to move, to change professions. So the economy needs a different mix of goods being produced than is currently being produced or that was recently being produced. Uh, it takes a while to adjust to that. So the the recession is the process of is the period of readjustment. Um, in a way, it, it's a healthy thing. Uh, it reallocates resources, labor, and capital uh, to places where they can be used in a more sustainable way. So you have idle capacity of factories if they've been producing goods that turn out no longer to be profitable. There's a temptation to think that if we just uh, continue to pour resources into the overexpanded industry housing, for example, that we can sustain the boom indefinitely. But there just aren't enough resources to go around to do that. It's a waste of resources to tax the public in order to maintain asset prices at an inflated level. If you're living high on that cheap credit hog, don't look for a cure from the hair of the dog. Real savings come first if you want to invest. Hayek's ideal monetary policy in a world where we assume we have a central bank, where we no longer have a gold standard, I think, based on, um, on what he said, would be for the central bank to aim at stability of nominal spending, nominal GDP, or in terms of the equation of exchange, <laughs> M times V, so the product of the quantity of money in existence and the rate at which it turns over. Uh, what that implies is that if people are hoarding money, supply more money, otherwise total spending shrinks. Uh, there's no reason to let that happen because that will have spillover effects on interest rates that are regrettable. On the other hand, don't inject money to offset increased productivity in the economy. If real output is going up, there's no reason that there need to be more dollar bills chasing the increased supply of goods. If entrepreneurs figure out ways to produce things more cheaply, they can sell them at lower prices. Right? Uh, there's no problem there to be solved by injecting enough money to raise the prices of other goods so as to offset the prices of the goods that are falling. So let the price level fall gently with increases in productivity. Uh, and the mistake he thought the Fed was making in the 1920s and the mistake I think the Fed made under Greenspan in the 80s and 90s uh, was to inject money so as to keep prices from falling uh, in a world of, of increasing productivity. And that meant injecting money into credit markets, that meant distorting interest rates, and that meant unsustainable investment projects added on top of the sustainable growth. So Hayek's main prescription for avoiding these problems was to avoid the boom, uh, avoid the false part of the boom, avoid the central bank disturbing the supply of credit and so driving the market interest rate away from its equilibrium level. This made it a little difficult to sell his message once the Great Depression began, because then the problem was no longer how could we have avoided it, but what do we do now? Um, and there Hayek's advice was, well, don't try to perpetuate an unsustainable situation. Uh, let resources be reallocated to where they can be sustainably used. Uh, He's sometimes been characterized as a liquidation theorist because of that, because you know, breaking up uh, enterprises that can't be sustained is, is a process of liquidation in the sense of bankruptcy. Some firms are going to go through bankruptcy procedures. He wasn't a, a bitter end liquidationist, though. He didn't believe that uh, more bankruptcies are better <laughs> or that um, 
the central bank should sit by while the money supply collapsed. So the, the cure was, uh, the treatment for the depression was to maintain aggregate demand, keep that from shrinking. So if the money supply is shrinking because of bank runs or if the velocity of money is shrinking, if people are hoarding money and not spending it, supply them with the money balances they want to hold so that their attempts to accumulate money are not leaving goods unsold on the shelves. But don't try to preserve unsound enterprises. Don't try to bail out firms that have wasted resources. Don't throw good money after bad in that sense. Bailouts, payoffs, buy poles with machinations. You provide them with cover to sell us a free lunch. Then all that we're left with is debt and a bunch. Let resources be allocated. And the more promptly that happens, the more promptly a sound recovery can begin. In a situation like 2008, where asset prices were too high relative to consumer prices to be sustainable, he would have said, let asset prices fall. I mean, the relative prices have to change. If asset prices are not allowed to fall in dollar terms, the only alternative is consumer prices are going to have to rise. So you're going to have to have massive inflation uh, to bring up consumer prices. Uh, so. Anybody who says we have to sustain asset prices where they are at the highest level to which they've reached has to be advocating you know, massive inflation. Uh, so his advice would have been to sustain a demand in the economy, don't let nominal spending shrink, but let asset prices fall uh, as necessary to restore sustainability to the economy, put it on a sound footing again. Whether it's the late 20s or 2005, booming bad investments seems like they'd thrive. You must save to invest, don't use the printing press, or a bus will surely follow, an economy depressed. All right, so we want those kind of relative price decisions and allocations of resources not to be distorted uh, by credit policy. Your so-called stimulus will make things worse. Just more of the same, more incentives perverse. 